And Fabio, my, my, my friend from Twitter land. I'm going to be in the middle. <laughs> hey, Fabio, good to see you again. Good to see you, Dave. How's it going? It's going well. Roger. Good to officially shake your hand. Pleasure to see you and meet you. How are you guys doing? Great. Doing great. What's, uh, what's happened at the show for you? I've seen a lot of good stuff, geeking out. Yeah, just yeah. hanging around with the, you know, the cool guys in the industry. A lot of networking. A lot of networking, yeah. This yeah. has been a, a fantastic event from the, the ability to talk with the customers, you know, like myself, on the bloggers like myself, and then, you know, get to talk to the engineers, both from Compellent and Dell. Uh, ten sessions, it's been a fantastic event. Yeah, I, I, I've been here a lot, but I had a chance yesterday, we ended early, and I spent some time in the, the VDI session. Mm -hmm. It was great. A lot of good questions, you know, a lot of hands-on. And you know what I love about it is, you know, you had some Dell guys up there talking, and, and, and you know, they're the experts, and users were asking questions. But the great thing was you had other customers saying, well, hey, there's another way to do that. Or, I, you know, I heard about a tool. Lakeside Software has another tool. And, and well, what about this tool? Well, that, how do they compare? And just peer sharing information Ooh, it's is all about sharing. really what it's all about. And, of course, we love that because that's what Wikibon's all about, you know. So, uh so what's hot these days? What do you, uh, what do you, what do you what's on your radar? Uh, uh, we're already watching closely the, the integration efforts by Dell to integrate everything that they both during the last two years. I mean, Exonet, Ocarina, now Compellent. Mm. And they're putting a lot of effort to, you know, integrate everything into a kind of single platform that can scale down from the SMB stuff made by Equalogic, even the PowerVault stuff up to, you know, even the enterprise space with, you know, big installation, big federated stuff with compellent, live volume, stuff like that, which is, you know, pretty impressive. So integrated, all working seamlessly. Hey, wait, 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 yeah. wake up, pinch him, pinch him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do, we, do we think that's actually um, that nirvana that you described? Is it, is it, it sounds hard, you know, from an integration standpoint. I mean, we've seen, yeah. we've seen NetApp trying to integrate Spinnaker for over seven years. We've seen EMC essentially give up on integration other than some lightweight yeah. integration and some hardware integration. I mean, that's not fair to the engineers. They're working hard enough. But I mean, in terms of true integration, it's hard to come by, isn't it? And, it's really and, hard. And so, but, so from a practitioner's perspective, um, why do you want it? And, and from a practical standpoint, um, do you feel like that it's worth it for a vendor to do that? So where's the balance? It is worth it. Maybe you just don't need, uh, you know, a titanic effort to, you know, have a really good baseline, you know, from the operating system, scale depth from the, from the SMB stuff up to the enterprise stuff on the same level, just like NetApp does, you know, with a single platform on tap that scales down from the Fast 2020 up to the 6000. Maybe they, they can retain uh, what they're doing now, the equal logic stuff, just iSCSI up to Compellent, which is multi-protocol. But they need to, to have a single pane of glass all across, just s more, uh, more like the EMC approach with the Unisphere, mm -hmm. which is, in my opinion, quite good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's quite okay, good. Okay, so that level of integration from your standpoint um, adds a lot of value to the organization, is well, that I right? I think we're seeing it today. I mean, you know, they have uh, let us play with the codename Spartan product, the yeah. uh, FS7500, you know, we got some hands-on yeah. with it, and I'm a hands-on guy, I like to get in there and get dirty with How's it. How's this work? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, we saw it with it's the same interface as the Ecologic interface. You know, it's it's second nature, then it's just a new NAS tab, you go in, you create a new SIF for an NFS share, and you're pretty much done. Um, you know, uh, Ecologic's always done a good job of being very streamlined, very simple interface for the admin that just doesn't have the time to be in there all day. And I think, you know, that is something that Dell is very good at doing across the board. Yeah, so you guys, I mean, I, um, we're, we live in this world where um, we have so many outlets, you know, social media, the, the cube, um, and, and guys like you can share your knowledge with uh, a, a, a big audience, you know, you're part blogger, part practitioner, yeah. and, and uh, how, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, maybe your roles, uh, Fabio. Let's start with you. Your organization, your 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 blog agenda, uh, the things that you, you're covering. Talk a little bit about yourself. Yeah. And um, I started blogging like three years ago now, and we started mostly to you know get the word out, um, mostly in Italy because we still have, you know. We're still lagging behind the other countries as far as technology is involved. So we're trying to spread out the word 
for what's new, what's hot in the industry, mostly for storage because you know it's it was not so developed in Italy. We tried to do that and we mostly succeed in that. And we tried to, you know, expand our vision to English language. So cross the border from Italy we start to blog in, in English to attend conferences outside Italy. And it's been quite good. I mean, the, we have this blog which is called Juku, J-U-K-U dot I-T, which is both in English and Italian. And we're two. I'm one of the guys. The other one is Enrico, which is you know now involved in another conference right now. And is he uh, on the West Coast? Yeah, he, he uh, is on the West close? Coast. Close, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close to the West Coast. I think I saw him this week. I was yeah, in, in Vegas. But uh, half and your tweets are in, in Italian. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I don't tweet so much in Italian because uh, there's no big audience for... The, Maybe Enrico you know, does then. Enrico does a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of tweeting, actually. And that's for the blogging. We also have, uh, me and Enrico, a small company. It's it's a very... It's a channel part for, for Dell and Compellent and for NetApp too, actually. And we specialize on, you know, storage and virtualization only. Mm -hmm. Provide consultancy to, you know, organization that ask us to maybe validate infrastructure or even design from scratch. And it's, you know, we're pretty specializing on that. And we're pretty successful. Good space to be in. I, you know, yeah. you're talking about um, conferences outside Italy. I think you should have more conferences inside of Italy so we can come visit. Yeah. Visit you. We should. <laughs> it sounds like a good thing. Yeah. What do you think, Roger? So, Roger, take us through, you know, so your activities and, and sure. What so, you do. Um, I, I'm an admin by day. You know, I work at a race services group at St. Cloud of Minnesota, uh, Sartell, Minnesota, and uh, so I do the VMware day-to-day -day storage compelling customer um, on that side. Um, I've really taken my time to uh, put the research that I do as an admin out of my my main blog. Uh, vroger.com, right? Um, I kind of do an admin's view on that space. Um, and, you know, what I've done also is is we're kind of centrally located in Minnesota. You know, I've started doing, uh, for the last three years, um, computer user groups in the VMware user group VMUG format, right? Yep. Um, to pull in the rural areas of the customers from the healthcare and from the small medium business. So these are VMUG-like? These are VMUG-like. This would be an unofficial VMUG, right? Um, You're forking VMUG? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and just as of this this weekend, I'm now uh, a co a leader in the Minneapolis use uh, VMUG. So, so, so why do you do this? It's, 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 it's people. There's demand. People and, and, well, it's, and, and it's, VMUGs are only what every six months in the area. Every quarterly. Is it a quarterly? Right, quarterly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but. But they're not always in the same. They're not in the Twin Cities necessarily, right? You might have to, or maybe they are. In, in our case, region. yeah. So our case, in New England, it's per like, city. Yeah. yeah, and I think that some of that is, you know, it's a little bit flexible, right? And yeah, actually, we do the same in Italy. Uh, actually, uh, I'm one of the founders of the VMAG. It just started like six months ago. Yeah. And we started doing that, and we're we're facing a lot of issues in choosing a place to do the the event, you know, the VMAG event. Uh, it's so hard. Florence, yeah. Rome, Milan, where do we go? Yeah, we, had, we had a couple of guys <laughs> flowing through Milan, into Milan from Sicily, which is, you know, on our flag. Yeah. And on, out of their own pocket. So, yeah, they're yeah, pretty dedicated. Yeah, 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 sure. They're pretty it's, it's a little challenging on the aspect that we're trying to find places to house anywhere from, you know, I've seen as low as you know 25 to 50 people, all the way up to three, 400 people, depending on the location. So you know somebody's got to pay for the the room, the refreshments, and that type of thing. Plus, you've got to find vendors that really to to help you talk and you know show them product offer. If you decide to do discussion, you've got to have topics. So you know, just both the time you work. take it out yeah. of your days. You know yeah. if you're busy already and so that stuff. But I mean the networking is great. You know um, you learn more from those events from each other than yeah. anything. You know so. And you have rogerlund.net too, right? Yeah, so, so uh, itblog.rogerlund.net is my main blog site. I created yeah. vroger as a redirect, right? Just yeah, because okay. you try to explain that and it's just a mouthful. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, also, um, here about six months ago, I created uh, vbrainstorm.com, a little more design oriented. I um, just got done doing a whiteboard with Commvault. 
uh, that type of that type of content. It's more uh, some place that doesn't get refreshed quite as fast. If you know, because you get a blog, it can get a lot of content. You're trying to search through it and stuff like that. So. I wonder if we could talk a little bit about uh, we were, Fabio. We're talking about the value of integration before, and you said there's clear value yeah, to you guys is. as practitioners. So one of the things we've been looking at in Wikibon is the uh, integration points around VMware, um, and of course, you know. I, I'm not a practitioner, I'm not really a, you know, a technologist, but you know, I'm in the business, so you hear about VAAI, you hear about VADP, you hear about change block tracking, those clearly have impacts on storage and backup. And then, so we dug into it a little bit, and we found there's, there's so many points of integration, like I think we counted 30 or 38 points yeah. of integration. Um, pathing, I mean, it's just the list goes on and on and on. Um, Help us squint through that. You know the list I'm talking about, right? It's yeah, endless, and and uh, and it's a big thing for vendors have to go right to that, and VMware has to support it. Um, how important are those capabilities to you guys as practitioners? Maybe Fabio, you could start, and yeah. Roger, you can chime in. In my case, they're quite fundamental to that, because if you try now in 2011 to, you know build a solution around VMware, uh, you know, a large one, maybe not a large, but starting from 100 VMs upwards, and you don't have integration points between the v VMware and your storage, this is not, this is not gonna be easy to manage. It's gonna be complicated, way too complicated to manage. And if you spend, say, 10 hours a, um, a week to manage storage related to VMware, if you have a, um, at least a couple of integration points, VAI, uh, maybe uh, an integration with vCenter, you're going to spend uh, maybe half of the time. Okay, Imagine scaling that up to 1,000 VMs, 2,000 VMs, 10,000 VMs. It's going to be you know, exponential. Right. Okay. So it's fundamental in 2011 to have a really strong integration between VMware and your storage. And, and Roger, different, different. So you guys know. So you know best. Compellent, Equalogic, or mostly Compellent. Mostly Compellent. Mostly Compellent. And, and you resell NetApp. We resell NetApp, but you know, uh, we do consultancy for every brand of storage. Any, any. So EMC, yeah, we're, we're IBM. We're storage HP. agnostic on that. Okay, so you're the trusted advisor. Yeah. I okay. Am. Um, and. Roger, your specialty is similar across anybody? Well, I've or? got to have a pretty wide understanding of, of the storage technology, uh, just for the, from the user group side of things, right? So, um, and I wouldn't be a rigid blogger if I didn't, you know, kind of understand what's going on out there. But uh, my probably strongest boots are the NetApp and Compellent. It was prior NetApp customer. So, um, different vendors have different approaches to integration, right? So EMC is like, we got to do it all. We're yeah. going to put like a zillion people on it. <laughs> And, uh, and we're going to market that, <laughs> right? And it's very effective, right? Um, when you talk to practitioners, different, you know, we don't have to go into them because I couldn't and yeah. we don't have time, but different capabilities have different value. You know, some of them mean a lot, some of them don't, make, don't mean so much. Um, other suppliers, maybe you don't have the resources, um, maybe they get the, the SDK later, whatever it is, and they focus on sweet spots, right? What's the landscape look like to you? I mean, is having that huge list like EMC does, is, is that um, you know, the right approach? Is it maybe a more targeted approach makes sense? I mean, what's your, what's your take well, on that? I'll give you the answer that you're always going to hear it depends, right? I mean, it depends a lot on customer needs. If you're a customer um, that relies um, as a budgetary uh, standpoint on professional services um, and you like to have um, a proven vendor relationship that you rely on them heavily, maybe EMC would make the most sense. Mm -hmm. um, if you are uh, a, a lean IT shop um, and you've only got a few minutes a day to manage storage, Ecologic makes sense. If you're somewhere in between, you know, NetApp or, you know, Compellent makes sense. And I think really what Dell's tried to, done, uh, tried to do, excuse me, um, in their portfolio is to offer multiple area ends of the spectrum, you know. Compellent has got some enterprise class features for sure. You know, it's a little more hands-on, a little capable from you know one end of the spectrum to the other. Ecologic has got uh, lots of products that stack in different verticals, um, both with a real uh, ease of management focus, right? And then they've got a lot of SMB products also on you know, the low end of things. My sense is, um, and I wonder if you could, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. My sense is, is, is Dell is, is catching up in part yeah. because Compellent 
was a, a s smaller vendor and didn't get the the VMware love that it's going to get now with Dell. Yeah. So it's it's now got a Got, got to, we got to give it some time to catch up in that integration. If you look at them now, you see that Equalogic is much more better positioned on the VMware integration yeah. because they got you know the AI, they already got uh, the vCenter integration. Yeah, uh, yeah well, Compellent has that too now. But vCenter. The vCenter. Well, that's a good starting point, right? Yeah. But, 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 you know, you know, the AI, for example, it, the, the uh, VMware was very judicious about how it. Even even made uh, SDKs available. You know? Yeah, and, uh, we know that. Speaking with your abundant guys, before well, yeah. the acquisition was, you know. And of course, EMC gets it first because they're obviously they, because own, they, they, they own that. They own it, and uh, and they're big. So there's, you know, there's a business justification. Of course, the NetApp. But, uh, so now that's going to change for Compellent, because now that they're part so. of a whale, yeah. you know, VMware's going to say, oh well, <laughs> they just cut the line. Didn't well, they? The biggest OEM, <laughs> yeah. VMware. I mean, it's. Well, I think that you see, you know, whoever's the most innovative, right? Whoever can change the fastest to that adaptive environment is always the top player for the most part. I mean, there's always going to be a nick out there, but, you know, and I think that, you know, with recent uh, people like uh, Jay Sabaki coming on board for Delta Pellet, the, you know, VCDX type level guys like yourself, obviously, um, are key players into showing what Delta Pellet are doing to accelerate some of the product line. Yeah, so, um, and we're kind of in the early days of this whole integration play, right? I mean, yeah. I remember I was at VMworld last year, and we probably had 70 guests on the queue, and probably half of them were, were, were uh, your practitioners, and I would ask them, and there were more VMware practitioners, not so much storage guys, and I would ask them, um, you know, what do you think about VAAI? You know, does it matter to you? And they go, I don't even know what that is. You know, and of course now they know, right? They're seeing it, but so, um, and of course the whole vendor community at the time was going crazy, so we need some time to sort of yeah. uh, uh, absorb all this stuff. The question I have around it is, where are we at with, with VMware and storage, um, and, and where are we going? Is, is it very early in the game? I mean, everybody knows VMware virtualization breaks storage, right? So we, yeah. wake, up, we wake up to that and say, <laughs> okay, we got to solve this problem. Yeah. How, where are we in solving that problem, and where do we need to go as an industry? Well, actually in the early days, for that, uh, and this is going to change pretty soon with the new vSphere. vSphere 5 would be, you know, a pretty good leap in advance with uh, the storage integration, the VAI, the new VAI. So we we'll probably see more focus on that from VMware because they sorted out most of the, you know, the other stuff. You know, they know how to do virtualized RAM effectively, they, they know how to virtualize CPUs effectively, and storage is left as the, you know, the last you know, big thing to sort it out correctly. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna probably change with the new release. Yeah, okay. And it, it will be the, you know, the new starting point, as it was the, the third ver version of VMware, the VMware BI3, it was back in 2006, I think. And that was the, you know, the starting point for VMware inside the enterprise the more enterprise level stuff. Before that, the VMware 2 was, VMware ESX 2 was used mostly for test and development deployments. And the tree got, you know, the breaking point to sell inside the big enterprise to virtualize tier one apps. People started to virtualize tier one, tier one apps inside VMware at the time. And probably the new vSphere, um, vSphere 5 will be where the storage becomes a first-class citizen inside VMware. Do you think, um, Roger, that that storage will eventually become invisible when it becomes that first-class citizen? Well, I think that you know, you've got a lot of interesting technology out there, right? And everybody's trying to figure out what to do with it. You've got products like Fusion I.O. that are coming in and for a pretty little dollar amount, you know, showing these huge numbers, right? And I think that you know, some part of the VMware side sometimes on the storage side, we're really trying to figure out how, how solid stick fits into all this, you know. Once they kind of figure out some of those techs um, and how to piece them together, I think that what we could see is going to be you know, HA and the storage side. It's going to be more uh, unified storage hardware for the vendors, more like VMware where you can go, um, you know, migrate over with your VMware infrastructure, you know, so it'll be pooled resources, um, it'll be pooled memory, it'll be pooled CPU, it'll be pooled storage, and tiered 
and you know it's more fluid um, in that re uh, that direction um, words uh, coming out right but um, what I'm trying to say is I think that that the storage vendors are, are doing some self-discovery trying to figure out how to, to connect these technologies together and and the software vendors are trying to figure out what the storage vendors are doing right and so as soon as that mesh that connectivity comes together correctly, we're really going to see some product movement from uh, totally new directions. And, so and, it's going to be an exciting time. And, and you know? Won't that simplify storage, accelerate about, the yeah. adoption? Yeah, definitely. So, so my question around that is, is you know, the big advantage that Compellent and Ecologic have is simplicity, yeah. right? And and clearly, they you know, their marketing, their their architecture, everything was, they looked at the market, they said, okay, EMC has all this share, they popularized the, the whole business that created the, the storage business. We're going to go after that that base with a simpler product. Now, if if we can make that stuff invisible, because EMC's got the you know some of the most complex products out there, doesn't that play to their advantage in a way? And and does it diminish the advantage of a guys like Compellent and Equalogic? And how do they keep pace? How do they innovate? Well, I think it all fits into the cloud, right? Yeah. I mean, if you can't you know mm. simplify some of this some of this storage technology on, on the admin end, you know, on our end, uh, as a customer or a practitioner, I mean, how are you going to float that in the cloud? You know, if it's if it requires uh, vendor integration every time that you move storage back and forth, it's just not smooth enough. So the, my translation of that is, is with VMware, of course, VMC owns VMware. They can brute force it, spend a lot of money on it, but there's so many places where it's just not practical to do that. So those. A simpler architecture is going to uh, adapt in different places faster. So there'll always be places where the little guys can tuck in. They're not little guys anymore, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. eventually they will come. I mean, yeah. uh, there will be another wave of star storage startups. I think. Be yeah, there's some funding going on in place. Yeah. There's a cloud on ramp, um, object store. You're seeing some some startups there. Yeah. Where but do I you see the new innovation? Go ahead. Well, I think we saw some of it like, you know, when we called director was announced, right? Some of the yeah. new directions that the industry is going in. Now it's just, you know, I mean, virtual desktops is a large part of this, right? Yeah. I mean, if we can't do VDI uh, through all the, the businesses, um, you know, how do we drain our data center, so to speak, to the cloud? If, if we're tied physically to a desktop, it's not something that's going to be an easy transition, right? If you don't have all of your documents, you don't have all your favorites, if you don't have your, your background that you like, you know, you just, all that stuff follows you where you go. I mean, that's really what the ultimate goal is, you know, is to provide seamless integration from your desktop, from your server, into the cloud, out of the cloud, into your private cloud, you know, almost. How about mobile? I almost feel like desktop, not almost, I feel like desktop's an outdated term. Right. You know? I mean, yeah. And VDI, you guys know, I mean, you know, you heard Maritz last year at VMworld talk about, how oh, you know, we really don't quite have it right with VDI. We got to really rethink that model. And at the same time, you see Citrix going full bore on mobile. And I think Citrix really understands that desktop virtualization space better than, than VMware, frankly. Um, and so, is mobile going to change the sort of whole VDI discussion from one of, um, maybe it's virtual device to virtual, or virtual desktop to virtual device. Mm -hmm. but, but today it's, well, the use, the, the use cases are narrow, the TCO is not there, but if, it's, if you in, adopt, embrace mobile, does that change that whole equation? What do you guys think? Well, I think it does in certain aspects, and I think a lot of it is us. Um, yeah. You know, how are we used to using a PC? Us as users, yeah. Us as users, mm -hmm. yeah. We have a mouse and a keyboard, and mm -hmm. that's here, right? I mean, in order to use some of these products, you have to get used to things like gestures. Um, you swipes, know, thumbs. Swipes, yeah. thumbs. We need to overcome all, you know, so it's like a mental block. Right, there's some like mental that. things that we have to do to go through a transition effect with, you know, and, and I think as as that transitions um, interface-wise, you know, it'll become much easier to do your day-to-day -day -day things, even on a phone, you know, but, you know, we're so used to having a peripheral device that we're using to navigate around that there's a little bit of getting used to that. I mean, there's no reason that we can't swipe in certain directions to do mouse gestures, right? But we just don't think in those terms. You know what's ironic about that, Roger, is when you think about how we got into that mindset today of, of the mouse, it really came from Apple and the Mac. Yeah. And, then, um, and then Microsoft copied that, and there was a lawsuit later on, and it got thrown out, and, and, and of course the rest is history. But now we're seeing it again, Apple is really popularizing the new gestures and you can see that you know last October they shipped that whatever there's that touchpad and they're going to use that for gesturing and and, uh, and and I think that the the the, the millennials 
are all going to come out of the you know they come out of the womb doing this right so right. Uh, uh, it's going to be it's interesting always to see. for the for the youngest generation to you know uh, always do something you know the way instead of relearning it's just like language yeah. right you learn it early it's part of who you are and you know how you operate but when you have to go back and rethink um, day to day function something I mean you don't think about looking at mouse do you. No, I mean, it's it's second nature, you know. It's no, just, but I didn't think about slash file retrieve. I had yeah. no problem with it. Right, you know? right. But you know, <laughs> but we're just not used to doing gesture based yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, a lot of it is just, uh, you know, I think around the box a little bit. Um, you know, and how do you how do you get that through to even if you decided that there's gestures that mean certain things as a standard, well, what's the right way to approach the people with that? You know, is it advertising? Is it marketing? Is it training? There's lots of different things to think about there. SSD, you brought up before, SSD flash is something we've looked at a lot. Um, we've looked at the consumer market. Really, remember remember the first uh, iPods had disk drives in them, and that's gone. Um, and it seems like flash is you know, moving further and further in to, to our space, the enterprise space. Fusion IO has got an IPO. Uh, Violin just raised a bunch of dough. We had STEC on yesterday and they've obviously done done very well in their markets a little roller coaster with their stock but still mm. interesting to watch we're seeing persistent um, storage change the game aren't we um, what are you guys seeing in, in, in flash we touched on it briefly but is it is it really changing the game that much and how so yeah I think so I think so because you know it's changing you know if you look at the you know like the Moore low for you know CPUs you see that you know, they double performance every, I think it was 12 months. It, it used to be every 24, then 18, and now it's 12. 12. Xeon's no, it's every 12 months, you're right. Is, uh, and you see the, and you plot on the same chart, the, you know, the evolution of the disk drives in the last 20 years, and it's yeah. mostly flat. Okay. Oh, in terms of uh, performance? Yeah. Performance, yeah. Yeah, you could even, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, the capacity, is, capacity, is changing, yeah, yeah, exploded. I mean, capacity exploded. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, performance per I.O. went, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Perform iOS per dense per capacity went there we down. Go. Went right? down. Yeah. And we need to and find performance how went up a little bit in terms yeah, of seat just, time. Yeah, 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 but yeah. just a little bit. Yeah, it's nothing just, really. Really yeah, flat. Just like marginal. Yeah, yeah. And flash is the next big thing, in my opinion. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And I think, that, see. I think that what you're seeing is the flash technology getting to the market, but there's a lot of different char characteristics there, right? Some flashes got faster reads, some's got faster writes. We've got different uh, uh, mean time to failures uh, depending on your flash. And there's cash in the equation, you know. How do you architect it? How much cash do you put versus solid state? Uh, different vendors are you know, kind of playing around those ideas, you know. But but either way, I mean, you were talking about some, some impressive time uh, differences in the virtual desktop world. You know, I, one of the partners was in the VDI session, probably the same one you attended. Um, and he said that, you know, a uh, customer on uh, regular component uh, SAS disk, uh, 45 seconds to boot, which I mean, honestly, is pretty fast. Mm -hmm. you know, 45 seconds, you remember how long it used to be five years ago to sure. desktop to boot up, but uh, by putting two flash disks, uh, flash based SSDs in there, 15 seconds. Yeah. You know, um, and that's, that isn't, we're not talking about a massive scale out of. Of flash drives to get you know, shave off some couple, time, right. yeah, and that was a pretty good number of, of yeah. PCs, not just one virtual desktop. So. Well, guys, I'm sorry. We're getting the hook. Um, this was great. I, I, you know, I'd love to get cards from you because um, you guys are some smart nodes, and uh, and uh, we could. I'd love to keep in touch and uh, bag, and, sh and share, you know, some of the things we're doing, and maybe have you guys on again. Sure. You know, really, really great discussion. So thanks so much for coming on the cube, Fabio Roselli, Roger Lund. Fantastic discussion.